Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Magic Mics. We get started as we do each and every week by introducing my two co-hosts, Ruben Ressler. Oh, hello. Aaron Campbell. Greetings, loved ones. Yeah. And it's been a wonderful week in Magic News. It's been exciting. It's been fun. It's been interesting. It's been weird. It's been weird. Um, mainly it's been, uh, it's been tasty. You know, you could even yeah. call it flavorful. Wow. That's what you could do. I'd like to make a brief request, though. Uh, next time you say my name, it's actually GP Day 2 competitor Aaron Campbell. Can Love you... it. Yeah, just... It's been a while since I've seen Sunday play just, on GPs. Just, yeah. just saying. Just, just saying. saying. <laughs> yeah. When was the last GPDC, the one that had uh, the format with, like, Lotus Cobra and Baneslayer Angel in it and stuff? I made Day 2 of that GP. Okay. Yeah. Back lo- long before any of us were even born. <laughs> Thank you. The rocks were soft. <laughs> Yeah, and there I was. I remember when this this was all trees back in the day. <laughs> there was sand, landscapes. <laughs> there was nothing, man. Just there was a nothing. filthy casual now. Oh right? my god! Talking about flavor? You kidding me? Talking about that flavor? We're talking about shadows over Innistrad spoilers. Our first. Now, all right, so let's let's begin this prompt this first with the incredible. Now, look, I got to give it up to Wizards, man. I got to give it up. They killed it with this promotion about the escape rooms, and yeah. there were three different yeah. rooms and three that different was sweet. GPs. And you had to like solve it, and they made all these. They had really awesome cosplay. They had unbelievable, like they had a really great video production where they produced like a really sweet like video out of what happened. People got to solve it, which un- which unlocked spoilers. It was so sweet. Just I loved it. It was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah it was it, definitely I mean, a nice change from all the battle and oath shenanigans of like you know. I mean, I think people are enjoying oath and battle, but you have to admit that the you know sensation was sort of dulled after all of the leak nonsense and all the banning drama, people getting suspended, and you know to have a set that seems to be free of all of that feels really good. Yeah, I mean, it feels absolutely amazing, and I think you know it's it. it first of all, it was not cheap. I think they spent a lot of money on that. I mean, good money. But that was worth it, but it certainly was cheap. And I think you could really see the detail and all that stuff. Like they went for it. They really did. And I can only imagine going through all of that crap with battle and then oath and this huge uproar and they had to solve it and blah, blah, blah. And they knew all this was coming. This stuff has been Mm -hmm. planned for probably at least a year because of how much stuff it took to just make this happen. Uh, So, you know, kudos to them that they kind of got through it, you know, and finally were able to succeed. I think my biggest takeaway is, you know, we like talking about spoilers on the show, and when they happen, obviously it's news, and we're going to report the news regardless. Right. (laughs) But this is what happens when they do it right, and it's sweet. So I think that stuff like this is the best detractor away from people who are like, well, I could spoil this, but then we lose sweet escape room happenings, right? So maybe when they see really cool reveals like this, when they see the cool, uh, you know, chase the or take the crown promo uh, Mm -hmm. online, when they see the cool, you know, Avacyn, um, you know, the the cosplay and the escape the room stuff and all the newspaper and the Hanwire Chronicle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, All that stuff is is really neat. And even people who are hungry for spoilers like us, we I prefer this, Um, even though I wasn't there. Um, but it was, it was just a really cool coordinated effort. Three GPs with three different escape rooms, right. uh, tri- the tri-corner hats, you know, the whole, the whole, uh, Homeland's style, uh, clothes and everything. Yeah. It's, it's just great. I, I love everything. To, shout out to Allison Lures for coordinating the whole damn thing. Like she was sick for part of that too. Did she? And I mean, oh yeah. And then to, she said, she said she spent a lot of time on FaceTime, you know, across three continents. And so hats off to her cause she's a queen. Yeah. So I'm mean, absolutely look again. It's just absolutely killed. It's one of the best sort of promotional marketing things. Now, like they they raised the bar big time with um, with Ulamog coming out of the packs, you know, with the crushed car and all that. And I think they surpassed it. I think they they went above and beyond what even what they did there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Such a huge effort across three different events. All these sweet spoilers. It was absolutely fantastic. And just to get started on a little something here, I'm going to bring up some cards. We can talk about some cards. Yeah, but but hold on a second. There was a point where we talked about spoilers, and because we had some technical difficulties earlier before the broadcast, I wasn't able to talk to you guys about it. You know, spoilers. Wouldn't it mm-hmm. be nice if we had one? Yeah. Do we have one? Do we have one? 
<gasps> oh my god, do we have one? Do we really? Mm -hmm. Dude, you're Shut the up. best Santa ever. I love oh, you so man. much. This is much better than telling us in the pre-show. Because <laughs> I can tell you live. This when will be my third it? time we having this. We have it today? Time no, it'll be here okay. in, in two weeks. Two weeks, okay. Two weeks from the day. We We're will a have a podcast. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. We have a spoiler? Yeah. <laughs> it's a Ruben, you say that like it's your first time. I'm Jewish. I don't have Christmas. <laughs> This is amazing. Oh, I'm so man. happy. I've had I've had spoilers in the past. Yeah, Evan, man. Evan, I've been hurt before. My spoilers in the past for Incontention were Slitherhead Ooh. and Gruel Charm. So Gruel you know, Charm was kind of sweet. We got a high wait, bar here. Wait, Gruel Charm was no. I was Gruel thinking Charm Golgari was, Charm. Was I was Golgari my Charm. two my two spoilers was Titania for the latest Commander set or the one before that one, and then I helped uh, MTG Potpourri spoil Fulminator Mage for MM twenty fifteen. Oh. So I've I've done okay. You got a much That's higher cool. bar than me. Evan has some. Hey, he's got a checkered past. Some <laughs> some strikes and gutters. <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm excited to see what we got. That's awesome. Yeah, that's I've awesome. gotten Wingmate Rock before. I got Boros yeah. Charm. Yeah, you. I said you had some hits. Yeah. yeah. Boros Charm. We Boros don't speak of. We, we don't talk, talk about, about her. This. You don't talk about Boros Charm. Right. No, we do not. Oh boy, but yeah. So, um, and we're and and Ruben and I are working on next week, trying to make next week happen. Right. We're cool. going to try to figure out if we can just have Evan. Sitting right here on my lap, right there. Uh, I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to try that hard. I mean, I'll understand. I mean, if you want to play Legacy, yeah, we'll figure right. it out. <laughs> oh, I see how it is. Your camera just went back up again. Yeah, by your the way. your camera is also cool. low for us trying to uh, put the show. Did together. it again? Damn, yeah. I was so excited about playing Legacy but yeah, Paper. Pay attention to the Twitter. Uh, we'll have news on whether or not we can do that. So at sure. Magic Mike's Cast, you got. You it. should follow that to. All right, so we're gonna have a, show. A, we're gonna have a spoiler. It's gonna be awesome. awesome. Let's move on. So let's talk about some cards. Arc talk about other people's spoilers. Archangel Avison that was brought to us via Christine Sprinkle as she transformed herself from Archangel Avison to Avison the Purifier. Absolutely badass. Now Archangel Avison is the best Sarah Angel of all time. It is a two white, three generic mana, four four flying vigilance angel that also has flash, that also when it enters the battlefield creatures you control get indestructible until end of turn, and also when a non-angel creature you control dies, transform her at the beginning of the next upkeep. Hold, they had to create an entirely new rule so this card wouldn't be broken, which is... Actual a, broken with the rules, yeah. Yeah, actual broken. If a transform trigger happens and resolves, if the transform trigger tries to happen again, it cannot happen. It will not happen. I only get it once, no matter what happens. Yeah. The other side of Avis and the Purifier, just let's get it out, is a red creature. She turns from white to red is now a 6-5 flyer, and when she is transformed into Avis and the Purifier, she deals three damage to each other creature and each opponent. My lord, what an unbelievable sweet mythic. I just can't. I just I can't. It's awesome. Yeah. I remember when Sarah Angel was too good for standard. Do you guys remember that? No. Yeah, they wouldn't reprint her. Yeah, she was too yeah, good. Yeah, she was too good, and this yeah. is just has a lot more words on it than that. This is a really weird card, um, because your creatures gain indestructible, and then when a non-angel dies, so it's like kind of difficult to flip her the turn you cast her. Like you need a sack outlet, yeah, right? And Tuco Shade or whatever. Right, you need something. Husk. Nintugo Husk, sure. You need, but you need something else because it's it's not gonna transform just on its own during combat, for example. Sure. Um, so, but I mean, the card is great, obviously, being a six-five flyer on the backside that wipes your opponent's board, even just being a four-four blocker that that Boros charms your team, um, is is insane. Both halves of this card are great. I fully expect this card to at least see some sort of play in like a mid-range control style strategy i can't i mean it's possible that there's an aggro deck that wants this at the top end just to keep its car, uh, uh friends around but mm -hmm. yeah this card's great i can't imagine this thing not seeing tournament play it was pushed aaron 
I'm more interested in the lore aspect. Like yeah. we have the story that came out today, and I think you know I was at GP Detroit, which we'll certainly talk about. But the the buzz around the room was what happened. Like how did we get here? How is she an antagonist of this block? Um, there's been a lot of talk of Nahiri being the big bad. Um, there's been everybody's been talking about possibly Emrakul, Merit Lage. People think Merit Lage might be coming back. Um, but, but people want to know why did Avison go bad, and that's the thing I keep thinking of when I look at this is how did we get here? And it's not that the card isn't sweet, but I want to know what happened. And we yeah. still haven't figured that out yet. We still haven't been told that yet. Yeah, the flavor of this set is insane. And we're going to talk about some more of those spoilers that just add even more flavor. And I just, yeah, I, I can't wait to hear more. I mean, yeah. the flavor text, wings that once bore hope are now stained with blood. She is our guardian no longer, said by Greet Cathar Apostate. Yeah. Un- uh, just freakishly fantastic card is really really sweet wow so we go from one tournament playable card to another tournament playable card in relentless dead it is a two black two two zombie that has menace when it dies you may pay a black if you do return it to its owner's hand when it dies you may pay x if you do return another target zombie creature card with convert a mana cost x from your graveyard to the battlefield good lord this thing is insane. This thing it, it comes with its own it comes with its own evasion. It comes uh, with its own rebuy. It comes uh, with two of them being able to rebuy each other uh, forever. Uh, Aaron, this card was made for you. It was uh, just like it was like a little hug and a little kiss and it was like, "Here you go, Aaron." You yeah, go. yeah. there's cards like this that I swear Wizards makes because they know that I don't really play Standard. And I used to say that the spoiler of um, Souls was that kind of card, too, where it was just a little gift from Wizards. It was like, Dear Aaron, please play Standard. Love, Watsy. And I feel like this is one of those cards. And I'm actually really excited about it. To go back to the Vorthos angle, if you look at the card art, that's the same background from, I think it's called Endless Ranks of the Dead. Endless Ranks of the Dead, yep. And, and so you artist. see you know, you know, see them beating against the glass in the first card. Well, now you see them actually having broken through the glass. Um, and again, going back to the flavor of the set that's so cool that they're they're giving shout outs back to older cards and the fact that ryan yeo also did that one uh and your your camera went all crazy again damn it um <laughs> i know you get you, whenever you get excited all of a sudden it's, <laughs> woo, it's the thing the thing flies up but ryan you got to do the the artwork again for this one which i thought was great because he did the first one um and it only took him six years to break the window so well we they move slowly you ever see walking dead they can't <laughs> yeah. they, they just sort of have shamble along the most important thing about this card, by the way, is what it doesn't say on it. It doesn't have the sentence, Relentless Dead can't block. That's this right. creature can block. Yes. And then rebuy and then block and then rebuy and then block and then rebuy. This card is a defensive powerhouse in addition to just being a nightmare for control decks. Um, we, I mean, everybody loves this card. Aaron likes it for the, the, the graveyard recursion portion. I like a 2-2 menace for two. You know, like just get your beats in. And I like a uh, good spike-worthy card. And you like a good spike-worthy oh. card. I think that this card's just great. It's um, good. It's going to go in cubes. It's going to be seen on top tables. Foils are insane. Foils are insane. You're going to be able to, to get both the, uh, like, the control decks are going to play this too. Because yes. it can block. Because yeah. it can block. That is huge. Every creature like this that has had that rebuy thing, whatever in whatever manner it did it, whether it was landfall or whether you had to pay something or sacrifice or whatever it is, they could never block. This one can block, and I'm telling you that is huge. It was so huge, I just literally just forgot that it had menace. And then somebody on Twitter was just like, and it has evasion. And I was like, uh -huh, of yeah. course it does. Of mm -hmm. course yeah. it does. This card would have been playable without menace. Yeah. Yeah. Menace was not necessary. You remember when, I think it was Sam Stoddard was just like, you know, we're, we're just trying out Menace and we're probably going to use it too much. Yeah. This is where they used it too much. Yep. This was probably. totally unnecessary. But yeah. it's great. It's great. Uh, I, I, I hope that this is a promo card of some kind because I feel like this is the style of Mythic that just shoots up immediately. This so is cheap. the style of Mythic that goes insanely expensive. Yeah. Um, and so hopefully this is like a buy a box promo or something later on. It's because not. Uh, get your copies quickly. We will look at the buy a box promo here shortly. Oh, okay. Yeah, which was spoiled uh, by Wizards, which we'll also talk about. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so Relentless, Relentless Dead is, is fan-freaking-tastic. I just, like, if this is the type, type of the perfect mythic because it's really cheap and it's really good. And whenever you want to play it, you probably want to play more than one, which means you got to get a ton of them, uh, which means it's going to be expensive. Yeah. The next card I wanted to talk about was Declaration in Stone. 
a white and a yeah. colorless rare sorcery exile target creature and all of the creatures its controller controls with the same name as that creature that player investigates which is put a clue token on the battlefield for each non-token creature exiled this way yeah man so, it can turn take all your care. creatures into into clues yes it turns it's your creatures great. into clues however if it turns your tokens if it exiles your tokens you get no clues no clues really yeah because it's non-token each non-token removed this way wow. exiled this way so that player investigates for each non-token that creature exiled this way. It is a premier sorcery. It just removes any creature, period, and gives yeah, that player investigates. So they get you get to give them a clue to do so, but you solve any problem, particularly multiple problems. Yeah. Nahiri is pissed. Yeah. I don't even know what's <laughs> happening in this picture. She's just so, turning zombies into stone? Oh, no. no, these are vampires. So this is Markov Manor. This is Soren's crib, okay. basically. Um, and Nahiri has the ability to just make stone. And so she made these stone pillars and put people in them. Like, these people she's were hanging bender? around, essentially. A like lithomancer. She's a lithomancer. But these people are hanging around, and she just pops a pillar out, and you happen to be standing there. Well, you're now part of the pillar. Um, yeah. And so Soren comes home, and he's like, hey, y'all. And he just sees his <laughs> friends just dangling from stone, like, just in this pillar. <laughs> Pillar, hanging out of this pillar they're not even like entombed in the pillar you see people you see limbs coming out of them you see half people three-fourths of people it's pretty gruesome stuff it's pretty and yeah. yeah and soren's just stoically standing there like well <laughs> <laughs> and and it's so fascinating because nahiri is like one of these really elusive characters that we saw in a commander set she was a white commander mm -hmm. we knew that she was involved with a lot of the zendikar storyline but we never knew much about her even in that capacity and so for her to be back why is she back and why is she pissed and it's yeah. just i i love it like i'm so this is probably the set i've been most excited about the lore for like i want to know why nahiri's mad I want to know why Avison's mad. I just want to know right now. I get a little bit of a jilted lover vibe from Nahiri. In yeah, this I set. get that too. Maybe that's just because Soren's in the set and he's like the dark vampire that we all think we can save. Um, but yeah, <laughs> going back to the going back to the card. I'm gonna step away from Dawson's Creek storyline and go back to the card. Um, this card's insane. Uh, we were talking about Relentless Dead. Well, you know what's a good answer to Relentless Dead is Declaration in Stone. Yeah. Um, if you're bringing back multiple copies, gets rid of all those zombie tokens and, and uh, Eldrazi, I mean, I guess it doesn't get rid of Eldrazi Scion tokens, but any problematic Eldrazi's that you have uh, running around, things like Thought Knots here, just gets rid of those immediately. Uh, this card's card's the real deal. Mm -hmm. Card is fan-freaking-tastic. I lo also love the flavor of the fact that you know, it's it when it turns your creatures, it puts them into stone. Now, there's a few people in the chat who notice that maybe she's rearranging the rock rather than creating the rock. Sure. But regardless, right. to be able to like just put stone around you, and then all of a sudden you're a clue in the mystery. Yeah. yeah. So Nahiri is making clues to what she's doing. It's like, really just it's mm. lovely. It's just, it's, it's like lovely. this whole set. It's just oh, it's just mm. all right. So. So the next cre the next card I want to talk about is probably the one that is the most exciting right now beyond uh, Avison, which is ridiculous. Thing in the Ice, yeah, is a blue and a colorless horror. Uh, it is an O4 defender, and it enters the battlefield with four ice counters on it. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, remove an ice counter from Thing in the Ice. And when it has no ice counters on it, you transform it into a seven eight named Awoken Horror. A Kraken Horror, in fact, that when this creature transforms into a Woken Horror, return all non-horror creatures to the owner's hands. Love this it. is one of the most sweet, deliciously beautiful, flavorful things that has come out in a while. It's Innistrad, imagine that. And... The really, there's just some really cool interactions that people are basically finding out. One of the things is that as you go back in Magic and you go back into formats of modern, legacy, vintage, people are talking about this card. There's a few things it does. One, it does not return a spell skite to your hand or to anyone's hand because that's a horror. Hmm. Yeah. Or Icarid. Or Icarid. It does return a Snapcaster Mage, which could sure. very well have helped, you know, Put the it in the play of playing thing in the ice. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is a card that is incredibly exciting. What do you guys think about it? Um, I'm deeply and madly in love. First of all, uh, thing in the ice is it, it, the the initials are are it's 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 the titty monster. Oh jeez. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just needed Proven. to say that. Really? I really? It's the only time I'll say it. Um, I'm really excited show. to play titty control. 
Jeez. But no, really, I think that this card can be a major player in modern with things like Ereo. I think that uh, everything that any format that has Phyrexian mana spells, um, this lets your remands be good in the late game. Um, it doesn't die to a lightning bolt. Uh, you know, you can reuse your Snapcaster mages. You can you can flip it at instant speed to save your uh, smaller creatures from removal. Um, while also bouncing bigger creatures like oh I don't know Thought Not Seer and and uh, you know Siege Rhino and other things that are going to be major players in uh, in modern I think in in vintage this thing has a chance to be a big player even though it doesn't bounce Icarid or Phyrexian Revoker two of the top fifteen most played creatures in vintage but it bounces everything else so I think that this card is insane um, it's my favorite card in the set so um, far. just because. So far, just because of how cool it is. I mean, if you look at the art, there's a boat towing it, and then when it flips, it destroys the boat. Like, everything about this, it's a Kraken horror on the back. It's amazing. Yeah, everything yo. about this is so good. <laughs> um, well, Thing in the Ice is basically me. Like, I prefer to call her Miss Thing in the Ice. And so, you know, Awoken Horror, I like to use the word woke a lot. And I'm pretty mm -hmm. woke. So, you know, I'd like to think that I'm the thing in the ice. And then when the ice melts, I just, I come out of the ice and yell, girl. And then my girl balances all the non-horrors. And True. I'm the woke horror. So I completely love this card. And I'm not even a blue mage. And I would totally play this. And you're right. When you think of the older formats, you think of things like Serum Visions, Cataxian Pro, really cheap, you know, kind of spells that you can be casting. And it wouldn't take a lot of work to transform this thing at all. Um, and so if somebody can find a home for it, I'm completely in. Yeah. Sweet. This yeah. card's great. This card yeah. is absolutely fantastic. So, and super flavorful. I just, I love everything about it. I, I also love the fact that there are these cards that, because older formats exist and they have those, they're sort of their own metagames, all of a sudden it just kind of like fits right in there. If this thing would have been one blue, it would probably just been busted. Just. Oh, absolutely. Just broke, like completely. literally broken in all older formats. Yeah. So, but next is the Biobox promo, uh, which is Elusive Tormentor. A two black, two generic mana vampire wizard. It's rare. It's a 4 4 that has one ability, one generic mana, discard a card, colon, transform it. Now it transforms, God, I love this. It transforms into Insidious Mist. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the vampire turns into mist. It's so good. Now yep. it is an elemental that is an O1 that has hexproof and indestructible. <laughs> it can't block, it can't be blocked. And when it attacks and is not blocked, you may pay a black and two generic mana. If you do, transform it back into Elusive Tormentor. God, this thing is just wonderful. It's just Oh God! It's just I, I love it because I'm right back in Indistrad, where every card is like, uh -huh. "Oh, that's so sweet!" and it just and it just works and it makes yep. so much sense and I just love it. Ah. <laughs> Indistrad, ladies and yeah, gentlemen. Man. Uh, I, I'm ready to talk about flavor for this card because, uh, as as some of you guys know, I, I studied a lot of film in college, and we're finally getting back to vampires turning in instead of turning into bats, which is like a thing that sometimes happens, yeah. turning into mist was like the old Hollywood style, right. you know, no Nosferatu, like the vampire of the mists. And then that got sort of adapted into Ravenloft, um, the, the Ravenloft books and stuff like that. So, you know, it harkens back to some of that kind of really cool flavor. This card's art, again, is just spot <laughs> on with the vampire peeking in the window and then misting in through the window. Yes. It's perfect. In addition to the fact that this card is really hard to kill. <laughs> it's, it's quite difficult to get rid of of, uh, of this card, so I'm, I'm excited to play it, I think. I think that this card, it's it's probably not going to be a major player in Standard, but I'm I'm super excited to try. I wouldn't be surprised, but because particularly the, the fact that it turns on Madness with its ability. True. And, and we haven't really seen like the pushed Madness cards yet. And there's a, there's, there's a possibility there could be a really great you know Madness card, and this is the type of card that lets you enable it. Uh, yeah. Aaron, how do you feel about the Tormentor that never goes away? I love this. You know, Ruben was talking about sort of like the history of vampires, and I used to play a game called Vampire the Masquerade, and uh, there was a clan of vampires called the Gangrel, and Protean 5, I believe, was Mist, where you could turn into Mist, and so when I saw this, my first thought was, oh my god, this is Protean, this is Gangrel, this is awesome. Um, I hate to cut ahead, but the one transform that I was most excited about, it probably won't see a lot of play, but did you see that they added a third stage to the Delver? They yes. did. Yes. Aberrant that was dope. Yeah, that man. Was dope. <laughs> it's, yeah, a third and fourth, by the way. Yeah. And apparently, apparently the um, uh, the Delver of Secrets wasn't done researching, which is kind of sweet. 
Well, it's kind of, it's really why sweet. Why should you let that stop you, you know? Just... Right. And I don't. But why let a little thing like turning into the fly uh, stop you from continuing your, your research? <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, that's that's what you do. That's that's a thing. So I will I will pull it up here for all of the ladies and gentlemen who happen to be hanging out. Uh, we're going to save this. And I'm going to bring it up now. All right. We're going to bring up mythicspoiler.com where spoilers are had. Um, and down here we have the Aberrant Research, which is a blue and three colorless 3-2 flyer. So it's a Cloud Manta, which is great. It's a Snapping Drake. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's already good and limited. Already good. It's an uncommon flyer, as it is. So it is already a flip Delver. So just so for those keeping track at home, Delver is technically a four mana worth of creature that you're getting yeah. for one mana. Snapping Drake has been a card in a lot of formats. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's been yeah. fantastic in all those. I mean, Cloud Manta has yeah. been a playable card every yeah. time. Uh, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you're going to mill the top card of your library. You're not going to be able to look at it anymore. you got to mill it. And when you mill it, if it's an instant or sorcery, you flip it into a 5-4 flyer. Yeah. That's really good. Same art, too. Like This is the same artist who did the original Delver. You can see it in the Aberrant Researcher that it looks very similar to the Flip Delver. Yeah. Um, and then they got him to do the other version as well. So the consistency here is just amazing, where they could have easily gotten somebody else and been like, Bleh. but no, they kept it uh, very, very all-in-one. Wow. So Yeah. yeah. Card is amazing. Yeah, card is... Just like everything, all these callbacks to old artists, mm -hmm. there's so many in this set. Um, that, 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 that we've already seen, and they're just... We're not even a fourth of the way into the set yet, right? I don't know how many cards we have, but... Oh, we got plenty to go. We got lots yeah. to go. So we're going to keep on moving here, and uh, we're going we're gonna to move on to a few of my, of my personal picks and favorites. First is one of the best-named magic cards of all time. Of all time is Just the Wind. Yeah. Just the Wind. A blue and a colorless... Unsummon, return target creature to its owner's hand. It has madness of one blue. First mm -hmm. of all, it's a common. This will see play in Popper. This is a very good card. Very good card. So, no, Popper. For, for, for real. Pop, popper. It's, you did your camera again. Wait, <laughs> Unsummon. Unsummon is already a card in Popper, isn't it? Of course it is, but this time it's a madness type enabler. It's a card that could go oh. in the madness deck. You know, at instant speed. Okay, that makes sense. All which, right. is, which is cool. Um, it's different. And, you know, ultimately it's just, honestly, it was just like a great flavor. Super cool, great, just one of the best names of yeah, a magic card. It. You know, that, that creature, it's just the wind. Up. Yeah, just get out of here. I loved it. And my second one that I have to bring up, because it works perfectly, uh, which is... Do -do 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 -do, Inspector Thraben. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah. Unbelievable. Mm -mm. Okay, all right. So hey, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. Do you know what happens if you play Thraven Inspector when you have a Torpor Orb in play? Because because I I because no because I have no clue. I have no clue. High five. <laughs> no, oh, we got there. We did. Why it. am I on? We and did it. <laughs> Your did camera it. can't even either. My camera can't. We're both just horrified. Like, For those who are the listening, they, she took her about to four seconds. I think of maybe five, and then bam. Yep, oh, you're that was, that oh, was beautiful. God. See, that's a joke that we can run because you're not all over Reddit like we are all the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, so let's keep on moving here into Desperate Ravings. Now, there were three GPs this weekend. They were well attended, very large events. People had a ton of fun in many of them. I day two to one of them. You happened to make Sunday at one mm -hmm. of them. And in fact, they're from that event itself was a very interesting, almost, you could say, heartfelt letter from <laughs> Steve Rubin at GP Detroit. So, first of all, uh, Rubin, would you tell us a little bit about Steve Rubin uh, and who Absolutely. he is and why this person is is a well-known person? I'd love to. Steve Rubin, and I, I mean, I've known Steve Rubin for a long time, mostly because we're both from, both from the Midwest, and either me or he was the other Rubin that went to Midwest PTQs. Because my first name's Ruben, his last name's Ruben. We always were like, oh, we're the two Rubens. Yeah, everybody high five. Because Ben Rubin didn't come to like Columbus, Ohio PTQs. <laughs> anyway, he and I both went to a lot of PES events. Uh, him way more than me. At this point, Steve is a platinum pro. Uh, I highly anticipate that he's going to be making worlds this year. He's well known for creating the uh, Abzan deck that Ari Lax won the Pro Tour with. Um, he's a very smart, very capable magic player who streams on Rubenzoo, R-U-B-I-N-Z-O-O, -O, on Twitch. 
Uh, he's also won a couple of big Hearthstone tournaments in the past. He's just one of the smartest people, best deck builders, and recently uh, gotten a lot of success himself uh, getting up to platinum level. Uh, he's just one of the smartest minds in American magic that's up and coming right now. Um, and he, as he says in his, he wrote it to something called an open letter to professional event services, the TO that organized GP Detroit, um, where he says that he's probably the person that has played in the most PES events. And you know what? It's tough for me to argue that because he's from the, the Western Pennsylvania area where he went to the Butler PA pre-releases and the, and the Butler, uh, PTQs and all the stuff around that area. And uh, and he he's he's been a defender of PES for a while, and, and maybe and so, not so much anymore. So I have it pulled up on the screen here, and I think you can really tell he's like he's heartfelt. He believes in this. He understands. He he's not trying to do this like just bashing and just like cussing and just like this is garbage and your people are terrible. He's just like slowly over time. He feels as though things have gotten to a point where people are having such negative experiences, even himself, to the point where he he himself can no longer deny it, even though he wanted to deny it, and he was denying it for a long time. And he just a few of these things, and a, a lot of what I kind of found, I think, that was uh, sort of the, the, the tying theme around most of what he was talking about, was just customer service. Just good old-fashioned, like, whether it was customer service, or whether it was staffing an event, or just having things available for people when they need them. And... Uh, and I can tell you this, you know, from personal experience, a lot of a lot of running a good tournament is just being nice is a way to put it. You know what I mean? Like when mm -hmm. people are in situations and they're stressful and they just got to figure it out and everything's on a timer and think people have to get stuff done and blah 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 and it's all crazy and it's all hectic. Just to listen and understand and try to help those people. And he kind of gives you know a few examples of where there weren't there weren't enough judges when judges were needed. That when he was trying to fix a problem, you know he. he he, he wasn't sort of, you know, he, he got a bad experience. There was another uh, person who posted on Reddit where they explained that they drove all this way to go play Legacy, and then they had a problem because they didn't hear the announcement, and they gave them a whole bunch of flack because they didn't, because uh, they were like, well, I, we didn't hear the announcement, so why can't we, like, either get our money back or play another thing? And it was just... It was it was quite the it was quite the dramatic tale. But Aaron, you were you were there. Like, tell us based on what you've read in terms of Ruben and what you've seen in terms of other reports that comes from that event. Tell tell us from the floor what happened. Okay. Well, I'm going to start off by saying that I actually didn't make it through Steve's post. Um, number one, I don't really care for open letters, and number two, I, I didn't really care for just his approach where he was like, "I am the customer, I am the marketing, I am the walrus." And I'm like, "That's nice, girl." Um, so I thought, I thought the, <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought the other thread was way more enjoyable, the one with like the fighting and the to calling him names. I was completely here for that one. But um, the thing about posts like this and you know, I was at GP Detroit, you know, I personally did not have that experience. I'm not saying that other people did not, but I personally did not see that. Mm -hmm. The only issues that I experienced was, I will agree that it did seem like there weren't very many judges. Um, and also the turnaround time was really, really long. I think we were going on like 30 minutes just about every round. So it was a really, really long day, um, especially when you are trying to play all nine rounds. It did get better during day two, which I assume was because there were just less people playing. But the thing that we keep coming back to in situations like this, and I know that we talked about this when the 2016 GP schedule was announced mm -hmm. and we saw that Legion Games wasn't being asked to host any events this year and people were, there was this outcry because Legion is a really, really beloved TO right. and people were going, well, if Legion isn't asked back, you know, what, 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 what do the rest of us have to do, you know? Right. And there was a lot of talk about why Legion wasn't asked back and I had heard through some sources that it had a lot to do with attendance and that Legion just wasn't bringing in the bodies like the, the other TOs were and so ultimately it does sound like no matter how many complaints the pastimes gets or how many complaints PES gets, they still bring in the bodies. And it sounds like that's the main thing that determines who gets asked back. And so it does sound like if you really do want these TOs to stop being asked to host these shows, you need to just not go um, and, and really kind of vote with your wallet. Um, the problem with that is, and you hear this a lot of times with Magic Online, is that sometimes it's not feasible to really do that. You know, if you boycott Magic Online, you're giving up a really great playtesting tool that's essentially hurting you. Um, right. And also, too, if you're trying to get on the train, you can't afford to miss a GP because right. you either need pro points, you need Planeswalker points, or you just want to qualify at a GP. So even though you're having a terrible time, you and no matter how furious you are 
are the TO, a lot of times you can't just vote with your dollar because you need something from these services. And so it's a really tricky position to be in to say, you know, to say, well, it sounds like you need to vote with your dollar, but you really can't because you're hurting yourself. And if, if that's the case, if attendance is like the top metric or if it's up there, you know, I would like to see that change to have some of this feedback matter because it seems like with certain TOs, there's just this outcry of people that don't see it for them, and yet they're asked back year after year after year. Yeah, right. and the and, other thing is that, uh, you know, this is this is completely unfounded rumor that totally. I was seeing on Reddit, and I've also seen in the Twitch chat here, uh, is that uh, Ultra Pro, like, didn't like Legion, I guess? Mm -hmm. They just had some beef or whatever, because uh, Legion, I think, has made sleeves in the past, and perhaps they, there was just some, some beef there between sleeve makers or whatever. That's completely unfounded. There's no reason yeah. to, to, to whatever. But, you know, it would, it, it's... it's be, what being we're lamenting, on the right side is right. is difficult, and and there's no real metric for deciding what a successful TO means. Um, and it's a bigger issue in general. You know, this isn't just GP Detroit. There's another uh, 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 Reddit thread that I noticed about another one of the GPs that happened this weekend mm -hmm. uh, at GP Melger, Melbourne. That's called Salt and Mines mm -hmm. uh, that I've uh, uh, that I'll put in the chat here for everybody to read. Um, and this is another complaint about you know what GPs are having problems. And I think that one of the biggest things about that, that I really thought this was a great comment, this is the first comment on the open letter uh, thread. This is from a user named Famous Actor, who says that the, the, the entire Grand Prix experience is declining as prices continue to skyrocket. And a big reason of that is having to pay judges in cash as opposed to the foils. Sure. Um, and puts an extraneous bur burden on them to run with minimal staff, as you were saying, and with really thin margins. And so they're, they're sort of caught between this rock and a hard place of wanting to do the best they can, but not really having the tools to do it. A lot of the old TOs, like PES, has been running these big, um, you know, big pre-releases that had 400 people at it. But when they switched over to the model of moving the middling size events to either gigantic GPs or small in-store pre-releases, mm -hmm. the, the companies that are like PES that have been doing this for 10 years couldn't adapt quick enough. The The climate just changed too quickly. Um, and so, you know, if, if GPs are a, a whole new monster, something needs to happen. I'm not an expert. I'm just a, a simple caveman lawyer, you know. So I don't I don't know what the what the deal is, but you know somebody smarter than me needs to figure it out because it's a problem basically every weekend. It's well, it's become an issue, and and ultimately the Legion Supply things is it wasn't about sort of what the rumor was in terms of them not getting attendance or the Ultra Pro thing or whatever. I think it was just us, you know, everyone kind of lamenting. Damn, Legion was good. Like Steve Port. Like he 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 hustled. He made it happen. He was a really good TO. Everyone loved his event, so on and so forth. And you see a lot of problems here. And so, so this one's free, Wizards. Okay, this one's free. Um, it's kind of a technological thing, and I know we've had some issues with that in the past. But hear me out. What if you know you have the report from GP Detroit, not only of everyone who played in the main event. But everyone who played inside events has been reported via software to your systems. You know that, okay? So you imagine there's a huge list of VCI numbers of everyone who was who attended an event or played in a side event in that in GP Detroit. Let's say you wanted feedback. Well, Wizards has a DCI number that's attached to an email address that could be attached to a survey that they send you and ask you about your GP experience. Why is there no feedback loop like that for players in order to tell people, not just like, you know, us who have this, who have this soapbox, who have this platform, who can, who can, you know, whether it's a, an upvoted Reddit post or whatever, you can look at the aggregate because there could be, you know, some people who, uh, you know, they were upset and there was this whole physical altercation and blah, 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 and they had a really bad time or they had an issue or maybe we didn't, we're not hearing all sides of that story. But when you're asking over 2,000 people who played in the main event, when you're asking the other thousand whatever people who played inside events all weekend what their opinion is you can get an aggregate idea of who's doing a good job and who's not doing a good job wizards yeah that one's free because i love you <laughs> remember that okay yeah, i mean i'm know, here it's... i'm here to help all right and and i swear i bring it up like every third episode but someday we're gonna have to talk about the judge's relationship with watsy because that's <laughs> another thing that's at the heart of this and it just needs to be fixed and there's just no fixing it or there's no there's no want to fix it basically yeah 
So someday we'll have that discussion, but today is not that day. There you go. All right. So uh, we're going to move on here to gathering the townsfolk. A really interesting, uh, an interesting development that I have never seen before. That I really, again, what we what we've sort of noticed over the past six months, over the past you know nine months, I say, uh, is Wizards is really taking a different approach when things hit the fan. And sometimes when things hit the fan, Helen Bourgeau is on the podcast with the guy who got suspended for four years over what she's like. <laughs> like, that's just... And then, like, what? And Wizards today... Well, not today. It was the other day. But it is now confirming that a leak happened on their end. I thought it was really fantastic uh, and really yeah. unique. I'd never seen anything like it. So I'm going to bring it on the screen now. And ultimately, what, what it was was uh, Blake Rasmussen... Uh, he makes his daily update. First of all, I still love the daily updates. They're absolutely amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much when you put when you include us. But uh, right here, he has um, the BioBox promo was leaked. What people are talking about. He says, so f I'm going to do something once that I will likely not do again. Confirm a leak. Why is it a leak? Because they did it accidentally. Somebody hit a button and they was, you know, people were looking and there was a very, there was a good opportunity. Someone could find it. And sure enough, they found it. And there's lots of rumors out there. There's fake cards and there's near misses and there's completely fabricated lists and all that good stuff. But sometimes even wizards makes mistakes and even wizards now in ways that I've never seen them act before actually confirms it. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. Um, you know, we've 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 come a long way, baby, between never confirming a leak and this. This yeah. is yeah, it's a big step. Um, you know, they've sort of talked about leaks recently when you know a lot of sets got spoiled re in like the last three months. Right. Um, but yeah, actually saying you know what we're confirming a leak because this one's on us right. is is a big deal. Um, I think that the day in which they confirm a leak that wasn't 100% on them misclicking mm -hmm. is still a long way off, um, if it ever happens. But uh, but yeah, good on them. Well done. Just, it's really unique. It's I've never a, seen anything like it's, it. But it's a smart way to handle it. Like, what else are they going to do? Yeah. Say, oops, no, that's a <laughs> that figment of us. your imagination. Ooh. Like, what are, what are they going to do? Come on. Aaron? Also, in this update, there was a shout-out to K-Stube. Shout-out to K-Stube. For joy of cubing which i really liked so just wanted to mention that real quick yeah yo i thought you were gonna make me do my helen again i was just like oh no um well you could <laughs> if you want to because you know i like she... it it's fantastic <laughs> she is i have a theory you know you're gonna see her planting a tree outside of wizard's headquarters one day and i'm gonna be underneath it like she's probably <laughs> like i do not want her to do that ever again but um so yeah so i love this i thought it was really great that he acknowledged it you know we talked about how when when everything was going on with the leaks and how that one game that one computer game that managed to like turn it around and how we wished wizards could have done that and um, I feel like they did that this time where they're like, okay, fine, uncle will do this. And um, I like this. I hope this is the start of something new. Well, I, I feel like it's almost the continuation of a different type of attitude when it comes to addressing things, no matter really what it is. Mm -hmm, you know, yeah. ultimately, there was that ridiculous hoax that got them all like in a tizzy, and then all of a sudden they're doing these updates and all this other stuff. I mean, they didn't have to do that. They really recognized something they never really recognized before, and I thought it was great. Like, Wizards being proactive and being like, yeah, we screwed it up, or yeah, you know, this isn't a thing, or yeah, we're looking into this thing. That's that's a change of heart, I feel, from the, from the type of behavior that I've seen because, you know, I've basically been very, very closely following what Wizards has done for the past eight years, you know, uh, and, and I, I just want to recognize it. I want to call it out and I want to say that it's a, it's a great thing and they need to keep doing that. Yeah. It's a positive. So next we're passing the salt. We're going to get, we're going to get a little spicy and this, and if there is one segment that needs Aaron to introduce it, <laughs> this is the one, this is it. Yes, exactly. Um, so there were two topics of conversation that happened recently that seemed to have a similar thread to them. And it all started slightly before the GP. When I was when we were driving to the GP, we saw some discussion centered around Noah Bradley. And I believe he put up a Reddit post and was talking about how he has decided that he's going to start charging a dollar for every signature that he has to do. And he kind of gave, and he's been one of the artists that's been very vocal about it, you know, how exactly this goes down and what 
what it's like to be an artist going to GPs and how much money you can really make as an artist. And I thought it made perfect sense. Like, I'm not mad at somebody who just wants a little bacon on their cheeseburger. Um, but Reddit was upset, of course, like they are. Their default setting is mad. And they were like, this is an outrage. What are you going to tell the children who come to your booth for signatures? And it turned into this whole discussion of how much are artists worth? Like, should artists do this? You know, are, you know, are we, do they think that we're inconveniencing them? It led to this whole discussion. And then after GP Detroit, there was a discussion about Christine Sprinkel and whether or not, you know, the money that it costs to fly her out there and the money that it costs to hire her basically was worth uh, possibly stiffing some of like the people who did well at the GP. So people who went like 12 and 12 and three, I think, or something like that didn't cash. All the 12 and, and they, threes cash. Right. And, All the 12 and threes people, cash. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Below it, something below that. But either way, there were people that felt that the payout should have gone lower and that if we had only not paid Christine Sprinkle, we could have paid these poor bastards. And it was like, so there's just been a lot of discussion lately about the value of these things that are not, you know, for the spiky crowd and that they still add value to GPs and whether or not they should be, should artists be demanding more money? Should cosplayers be worth the money? And I just thought it was an interesting thing to bring up because I think they think yes on all counts. <laughs> yeah. The reason why this segment isn't a red zone is because all three of us are in agreement on this one. And I didn't particularly want to play devil's advocate um, because it's like, we're all artists here. None of us have ever worked with our hands. Look at us. Look at, look at us Nancy boys and girls. Sorry. But like, I've never been in the coal mines. Like we're all, we're all, we've never done a hard day's labor in our life. Magic speaking. Like none of us are, I understand you made your day two competitor, Aaron Campbell, and you made $200 playing something, but none of us have ever, none of us have ever, we're not paying the bills with our tournament records. We're all content creators, right? right? That's what we're doing. So yeah. we're never going to be like, oh yeah, no, uh, only the people who win games of magic should be getting money and not the people who pour their heart and soul into other aspects of the game. Of course, we're not going to argue on that. <laughs> Um, but it is, I think it's worth bringing up, sure, even though we all we all agree there are voices on the other side. And it's good to argue our points. And, you sure. know, we're all quite loquacious individuals, so we can argue our points quite well. I will say that, you know, I think that having Christine Sprankle or having uh, Jacqueline Foglia or having any number of these cosplayers at an event, especially when you're spoiling a new set like Shadows Over Innistrad right. and trying to create excitement, right. the value of paying them X dollars is worth more than paying X dollars to, let's say, 65th through 72nd place. Um, I think that you know the excitement garnered on Twitter, on the live coverage, if there is live coverage um, for, for whatever event... Uh, in Instagram trying to get casual fans to watch brings a lot more eyeballs than simply paying out more people. You might get more people into the building in the short term if you guarantee more payout spots, but in the long term, you're growing a fan base much wider if you're, if you're treating your artists well. All artists, content creators, magic, actual artists, um, alterists, cosplayers, Anyone, podcast creators, anyone who has anything to do with creating more uh, uh, stuff around magic sure. is going to bring more people to the game in one way or another. So I think Kibler said it best. Like Kibler showed a picture. Uh, Kibler was sort of discussing this on Twitter, and he had right. he found a picture of Sprinkle with cr the whole crowd was transfixed on her like they should have been. And Kibler was like, so were these people ex as excited about the pairings as they were about right. Sprinkle? And it was like, <laughs> Like I was, I was dead. I was like, cosplay, yes. cosplay is not new, but it's new to magic. -ish. It is new it's to new magic. It's, it's new to magic. New. It's pretty rare. Uh, altering is pretty new to magic. Still, it's in its infancy. Even magic coverage is still kind of in its infancy. It's only been around for maybe three years at at the at the peak. And three years ago, it was a dude with a camera, and like that's it. And that dude was Evan, <laughs> and that was it. There just wasn't anything else. Right? It's more so, like five or six years, but I understand what you mean. St we're still going through some growing pains. There are right. still some people who are like, eh, I'm not sure this is the kind of change I want. Um, but, you know, change is painful sometimes to some people. And I think that this is, uh, I think that we can all agree that this is something that 
that is worth uh, our time. Even though I'm never going to cosplay. Like, I'm not a person who's going to alter. Aww. Like, Aww. I, I mean, I could be convinced if we get a, if, if you Patreon subscribers want that as a you stretch goal, be, you, you know what? You really hot Gerard. Happen. You should be Gerard. All right. Open up your shirt a little bit. Just give you, heard, you heard it here first. Let's reach the Gerard Rubin stretch goal. <laughs> And I'll, you know, uh, I'll just paint silver and be all, all carned up. I'll just nice. Go ahead and carn it. Oh my That's god, that would be amazing. awesome. Yep. Oh, yep. Man. Straight to Valhalla, you know. I just anyway, wanna... right. you know, we all we're we're all on the same page. Right. right. I mean, uh, ultimately, you know, first of all, there's a few things. Uh, cash payout for a GP has nothing to do with her showing up there. Yeah, it's it's like, it's not even the same it's, department. It's, it's apples and spaceships. There's nothing. <laughs> close to these things next to each other but you know ultimately sometimes i think for this promotion it was more than likely wizards but a lot of times it is the tournament organizers that bring out these cosplayers it's not like the tournament organizers are like hey, hey, hey we're going to take away the prize money in order to bring such and such in like no, no, no you bring these things because people love this stuff they like this stuff it grows the community people get really excited about it it's really interesting it's fascinating it can help tie into the theme of the event um you know when uh, uh when gp charlotte happened when noble hierarch well turns out christine sprangers love us noble hierarch right it was really cool as a way to make this kind of come alive that was different and when avison she she dressed up as avison and it came back as you know avison returned or what was the what's the card name again purifier avison the purifier absolutely fantastic you know that's that's just one of those moments that's going to live forever that picture is just that it's it's very just telling lines to why you want to do that stuff it puts a spotlight on it obviously we're all on we're all we're all on the same side here but I'm trying to explain to anyone who has any doubts as to the as the why this is a good thing for magic. It's it's I would also I would I would actually correlate it to if there is an employee uh, appreciation at your job. Let's say they do a uh, like a summer barbecue or they take the whole company to the movies or they give everybody some clothes like shirts or hoodies or whatever. And there's somebody there going like, why don't they just give us extra, you know, paychecks or whatever? Why don't they just, you know, give me more salary or why don't they just give everybody better Christmas bonuses? Because the aggregate happiness of everyone being lifted up is better for everybody. The aggregate happiness that is brought with this cosplay and this entire thematic thing that they did over the past weekend is is elevated in a way that it's not elevated any other way yeah there were two points that i wanted to touch on real quick you know i found it interesting that the same people that won't get out of bed for anything less than like a five hundred dollar a five hundred dollar like prize pool are the same people that are faulting noah bradley for charging a dollar per card like really Really? Um, and then the other thing that I really was happy about, and I kind of touched on this with the Magic the Amateuring girls who are awesome, is there's nothing wrong with somebody knowing their worth. You know, if I'm podcasting, you know, I've reached a point where if a website wants to host me, I do have a couple demands. You know, I am going to ask that you promote me. I am going to ask for some form of compensation. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, if you know that you've earned your place, there's nothing wrong with someone of Noah Bradley's stature to be like, mm, I'm worth a dollar a signature. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I really, I really bothers me when I see people who do things, who say things like, well, you don't deserve this. You know, you can't, you can't flex your worth. You can't know your worth. And I'm the opposite get it all like get your coin <laughs> i'm not mad at the hustle do your thing and so i think there's nothing wrong with it i wish more people would say i am worth this and 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 seek it out i think i think noah bradley himself is very unique i, I believe in that way in that uh i believe his play mats were a little bit more expensive than a lot of yeah. others and his artwork in terms of like his print costs and things were higher than other people and th from all indications they do sell people want to buy those things they want to support noah they, they they appreciate the art that he makes they appreciate the art that he's made for magic and if he wants to charge 500 dollars for that canvas that is as big as i am well more power to him it's an amazing mad. piece of art he earned it he busted his butt on it. he made an incredible thing let him enjoy it yeah let him run it and if he knows yeah. his value and he won't let anyone else take that away from him then by god it know more power to you buddy i always have a saying it says know what you're worth and demand three times as much so wow that's <laughs> great <laughs> i'm worth nothing i demand three times, <laughs> three times zero <laughs> must be found what's your paycheck all right double it yeah <laughs> so as we do we're going to round out to the finisher and the finisher <clears throat> 
which was just so happened to be influenced by Mr. Bressler as they Look, do. I can't help what I am desperately and madly in love with. <laughs> Forever for your entire life. Now, yeah. Variety Magazine announced recently that Nickelodeon Studios is going to revive Ruben's all-time favorite TV show. What is it, Ruben? <laughs> Oh, it's it's a little show called Legends of the Hidden Temple. Oh, yes. do you Which, like that? By the way, I have a huge beef that Netflix doesn't have any game shows. And Legends of the Hidden Temple, like, you just can't find old episodes of Legends of the Hidden Temple. If anyone knows where to find old episodes of Legends of the Hidden Temple, I would be your best friend forever. Please let I me know. Don't, I don't have that, but I do have several channels of Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. Also good. Also right. very That'll good. tide me over until I get my three okay. seasons. Of I'll send them to you. Really weird how there's no game shows on Hulu or Netflix. Isn't it? They just they just don't exist. Where's the old Jeopardy episodes? Where's and old old prices rights? Like you just can't yeah. find them anywhere. They're just Give nowhere. Me, I miss classic concentration. Remember that game with like the Rebuses? Vaguely. The Rebus, yeah. Vaguely. Okay. Yes. Very vaguely. Showing my age here. Mm. All right. So your favorite show is Legends of the Legends Hidden Temple. Legends of the Hidden Temple. Of yeah. course it is. And unfortunately, it won't be a full-fledged comeback to the awesome game show glory. Stupid. Awesome game show <laughs> glory. <laughs> but instead, as a made-for-TV movie, which is BS, whatever. Oh, whatever, man. But it's it like does. spelling is going to be in this, isn't she? It does beg the question. If you could make one MTG themed team to compete mm. against the blue barracudas, the orange iguanas, and all the rest, what team would you choose, Aaron? Okay. Obviously, I would be for the black zombies because mm. we could just avoid the moat and most of the temple games altogether simply by using the bridge from below to get all the way to the finals. Wow. That's just good strategy. That's yeah. good, good old fashioned strategics. Well, I'm ready to strap on the helmet and the elbow pads for the gray Orzov ghosts for a couple reasons. Because clearly they have an advantage at the steps of knowledge, right? Being so old and ancient, they can extort any temple guard with gold coins that they already have. There's no need for those silly pendants. And most importantly, as we all know, the Orzov have the best team spirit. Mm. Or spirits. Spirits. The mm. best team spirits. Ah, ah. I think... That by far, the most powerful team would be the Colorless Eldrazi. Because I think we all know that if any team could take full advantage of a temple, it's the Eldrazi. Oh, well, that's true. Hopefully not for much longer. Just yeah. saying. See well, if the no. Colorless Eldrazi get banned soon. I played it five times the other day. Five. In that's an eight lot. round. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, four Which side. format? Modern? Yeah, at the GP. I played eight yeah. rounds of Magic because I had to buy five times. Hopefully like, next week's first pick is going to be will they surprise banned all the Eldrazi cards? Oops. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Now, one of the things that, that Forsyth mentioned in his interview at GB Detroit, which you can find if you Google around for it, um, was he mentioned that he, he he doesn't want to destroy it as a deck, but he don't he doesn't certainly doesn't want it to be as prevalent as it, as it is now, which to me says they're going to ban Eye of Ugin. They're not going to ban Eldrazi Temple. They're going to let them keep their Ancient Tomb for one more cycle, see if they're still as good, and then keep going. Because without so, both of those lands, that deck is just dead. Just so if you're, done. If your team in Legends of the Hidden Temple is the colorless Eldrazi, mm -hmm. does that mean that they're shirtless? Or are they just wearing like plain white t-shirts? What's the deal? Just white pants, white shirt, nothing. All right. Yeah. yeah. So like a Cheesecake Factory server? Like, Gross. Ooh. Yeah, they wear like white. That. They're wearing all white. We're going to ban them. Cool. Bantam. So. Bantam done. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that ends another episode of Magic Mike's. And as usual, I would like to thank everyone for hanging out with us this evening. Thank you very much, Ruben, for joining us. Oh, thank you. Aaron, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. You guys are fantastic, as usual. And this is a little awkward. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up right now. I don't have the outro slide yet because <laughs> I replaced it. I had many, many uh I, I had many problems with this episode, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'm doing right now is filling time so that I can bring it on the screen. <laughs> I don't know if you figured that out yet, but I'm just going to run it until I keep doing it, until I got it, and I've got it. Thank you very much. So, well. ladies and gentlemen, we may or may not have a show next week. We will see. We'll keep an eye on our Twitter at Magic Mike's Cast, or my Twitter at Mr. Orange, or Ruben's Twitter at Mox Ruby, or Aaron's Twitter at Original... 
Estrus. Estrus. I really guess you. it. See, I didn't want to say it because I knew I was going to screw it up. <laughs> but that ends another episode. You guys are fan freaking tastic. Please visit our website at magicmikespodcast.com that exists thanks to our Patreon supporters. Or follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe, do all the things social that tells people we exist. Catch us online at twist.tv slash magic mics, on Twitter at magic mics cast, on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash magic mics, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash magic mics. Talk to us privately at magic mics podcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio only podcast at magic mics podcast.libsyn.com or find us on iTunes or join us here next week, same time, same place, for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.